What is up guys, Sharpen here and welcome back to my tutorials. Now if you didn't know this, my tutorials are being voted on my Discord server, so if you want to vote for your content, join the Discord server now, the invite link is in the description for you. And today's voted topic was reflections. Now I know it might seem hard at first, but it's actually really, really simple. Now click the subscribe button and I'll start the tutorial. Let's say you have a window on your set. Okay, this is some random scenery from my survival world, don't need to know what it is. We're here for the windows. I want this big window to be reflecting the inside of the room, so this part. So how do I do that? There is one popular method that you actually duplicate your world and invert it and recreate on the other side, like for mirrors or water reflections. But this window is in the middle of the scenery, like I can't duplicate the entire scenery and turn around. Like, let me try. Oh look, what's outside your window? Alpha down. Oh look, it is a reflection. Yeah, no, don't do that, plus. However, there is one mechanic in Mind Mirror that is very, very underrated. I want to import a flat surface. This is one special thing, because of this feature right here. It says texture. Well, you can obviously browse for texture, make it cobblestone, make it any sort of image you want, but there's something even more fascinating about this. Like, if I create a new work camera right here, as you see right here, the work camera is uh, looking at my screen. If I direct the camera somewhere here and uh, go back to my surface in the library here, if I click the texture, now a camera option will appear. Let me just click this real fast and what happens? Whoa! The camera view is now on the surface. Well, what happens when I move the camera? Ooh. The view on the surface moves along with the camera. Let me resize the surface. Whoa! When I move the camera, it looks as though that I have my own little camera view up there. Like, if I try to do this, there's a lot of cameras uh, inside of cameras, inside of cameras. Yeah, never mind that. But this could easily work as a window. Let me try to do something. So if I put the camera in here, increase the field of view, this is now my camera view. So if I put the surface, lock it on the scenery, just, just because, and now position it on the window. Okay, let's try to adjust this camera here. Not sure exactly what I'm going for. Surface should be above the window. The camera should also be above all this. Okay, let's resize the surface. I think it's three and three, it just fits perfectly. Okay. Put the camera in the corner here. Mirror the texture horizontally and uh, fix it just a little bit. Like, let's make small adjustments to this. Let's say that's it, even though it's not completely accurate. And let's go for the surface here. Alpha down. And by the way, if you see glitching like this, uh, click the surface and increase the render depth to above zero, or at least above the entire uh, scenery thing. And you should have this. Let's make it more visible. Now we have this, let's go for the upper multiply icon. Let's go for that and let's make it lightly bluish or give it a glass tint. And since our surface is too square to display a normal image, increase the scale because the rest will be hidden in blocks. It won't be sticking out anywhere. This kind of works like a reflection. Okay, now if I lock the camera on the surface, of course it's gone crazy. Uh, put it to zero, 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 zero. So now it's in here. Put the rotation to zero, zero, zero as well. So now it's right in the center. I'm gonna name this camera Reflection so I know what it is. And I'm gonna create a working camera, so this is my actual camera now. If I do this... Okay, the reflection could be tweaked. Let's increase this, so the field of view is now increased. If I come back to my work camera and do this... Surface, actually, surface. Uh, let's increase this, maybe brightness. Now if I look at this, like, it does look like some reflection of the room in the background. This is something. And if I were to add a person in here, and if I were to move the Steve, as you see, he appears on the reflection as well. This is a functional window reflection. To sum up, add a surface, add a camera, which will only serve as a reflection. Lock it on the surface if you must, because it's easier to work that way. Select the surface's texture and make it the camera's texture. Now the surface is your reflection. If I delete all this, add some random beach schematic. Now I want to make a block of diamond reflect stuff. What do I do? First, surfaces. 
surface flexions. Lock the reflections on the block of diamonds. It's now currently positioned at 0, 0, 0. Let's put the custom rotation point to 0 and raise it up by 8. So now it's exactly in the same place, but the custom rotation point is in the center. Now I want to move it minus 8 out. Oh, it, it's minus 9. Okay, let's go for minus 8. Now it's glitching. Okay, let's go for minus 8.01. Now it's not gonna glitch, but it's still here. Name this front in the timeline. Duplicate it, put it to plus 8.01. So now it's exactly in the same place, but on the other side, back. Repeat the process on all sides. You should get this. Now, as you see, the edges are glitching a bit, so let's select all of them and scale it up by 1.01. .01. That should fix your issues and you have a diamond block encaged in six surfaces called front, back, right, left, up and down. Now the interesting part is the textures because you need six cameras, not even gonna lie. Caution, this might lag your project. Okay, let's add a camera. That's a spotlight. I keep making the same mistake. Delete. Add a camera front, but with uppercase letters so I know what the camera is, what a surface is. Let's lock the front on the front and uh, put the rotation to zero, zero, zero. Position is already put to zero. Now, as you see, this camera is facing inwards. That means the surface is turned the wrong way. So if I add a texture to this front, it's gonna look funny, so let's just go for the front and uh, turn it around 180 degrees, so now this should work a lot better. This is it. Repeat the process six times for all faces. Your block of diamonds should look something like this. First thing I'm bothered about is the edges. They don't line up nice enough, so let's select all of the cameras. There we go. Increase the field of view until all the edges align Note, this will only work to some extent as different distances from the cameras make for different fields of view. The final thing you gotta do is select all of your surfaces, increase the render depth to prevent glitching. Now decrease the alpha down so you can see the diamond block and go for this upper multiply thing and let's make it blue-ish. And if I just add a new working camera, working camera, so you know it's a working camera, take a look at this right here. You can clearly see that this diamond block is reflecting stuff. Although the edges still don't align perfectly, but it's reflecting stuff. So if I animate this diamond block, but as I see now, I should probably select this reflections and let's go for invert. Yeah, that's it. See the edges? They are clearly visible, like you can tell when this starts and this stops. So I want to try to fix that. Okay, that's gonna look nice from one angle. The other ones are just messed up. Yeah, as you see, it's glitching here. Let me just export this for you to have in the final video. Export with my current video settings. Let it export for you to see it later. That was my reflections tutorial. Wasn't the best and some things could use a bit, a bit of more effort. Although it's not 100% realistic, it can be used in small scenes like for a split second or just to display one face of a block that requires a lot of manual work. Again, Minimeter wasn't really made for this and this is one method to push the limit back just a bit. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Thank you for watching and stay sharp.